This has been a production of EntertainmentStudios.com. At SWC Properties, we pride ourselves on providing to you the very best in customer satisfaction. To list your home with SWC, give us a call. And don't forget to watch the House to Home Show every Saturday night here on ABC7. It's simple. We just market your home better. Monday at 4 on Suncoast View. We have must-see moments from the past months and some behind-the-scenes stories. I'm Stephanie Roberts. On Suncoast View Monday, we answer your emails and questions about some of our on-air antics. Plus, we talk to a celebrity scientist who's shaping our future. We channel our need for speed and head out on the water to get ready for the Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix, plus the best Suncoast bar food in the kitchen. Monday at 4 on Suncoast View. Thanks to my volunteer, I am a better reader. Thanks to my volunteer, math seems simple now. Thanks to my volunteer, I discovered new career goals. I'm a volunteer for Sarasota County Schools, so I know I can make a difference. And you can too. Give an hour, change a life. At SWC Properties, we pride ourselves on providing to you the very best in customer satisfaction. To list your home with SWC, give us a call. And don't forget to watch the House to Home Show every Saturday night here on ABC7. It's simple. We just market your home better. On air, online, and on your mobile device, this hurricane season turn to the official Sunco Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. The all-new official Suncoast forecast on ABC7. Today on Animal Outtakes... It was unreal. I've never done anything like that. From bareback on the beach to protecting and serving. When we're out, we get a lot of people that uh, come up to us, talk to us, pet the horses. I mean, that's what we're there for. Nobody goes out and pets a patrol car. Horses are all around us. Join us as we learn about how they're being put to use for both work and play. <laughs> Welcome to Animal Outtakes. I'm your host, Marcia Panucci. Horses are magnificent creatures and have been a trusted companion for equine enthusiasts for generations. Today, we'll see how these amazing animals are being put to work as therapy animals, law enforcement tools, and much more. We have a lot to cover, so let's giddy up. It's a busy day on Siesta Key Beach in Sarasota, Florida. But while the crowds swell, there's a team of officers on patrol. In fact, they're drawing quite a crowd themselves. These horses are part of the Sheriff's Mounted Patrol Unit. Their supervisor, Sergeant Chris Laster, says having these animals on patrol has a real impact on the community. It really is a great bridge between the public and law enforcement because everybody likes a horse. So it doesn't matter what demographic, what background, people are going to come out and talk to us. Now, how many horses do you have here? Right now we have 10 horses and uh, we have eight riders. And you know their names? Absolutely. We've got Honor, we've got Patriot, we have Major, and then from that point on we have Sentinel, we have Legacy, we have uh, Freedom, uh, we've got Valor, Charlie, and Justice. Tell us where you get the horses. Okay, well, we've, we've had horses from all over the place, most of them have been locally, though. Many of the horses used in the unit have been donated, although Sergeant Laster says they look for some specific qualities in their mounts. What type of horse makes the cut? Well, what we look for is what we would consider a big, bold bay and boy, uh, <laughs> basically. You know, all of our horses, as you'll see when you look through the barn, are, are bay or black, which means they're black. Uh, obviously, or bay means they're brown with a black mane and tail. And we do that for uniformity so that we, we all look alike, it looks more impressive, it looks sharper, and it helps us get our job done through the fact that we look more professional so people are more apt to uh, do what we ask them to do. But for the most part, what we're looking for is the, a horse with a natural 
calm disposition. And we really look for a dressage background because that's yeah. really the origins of dressage is in the respect that it was used for warfare. So a lot of the maneuvers that we use for police work, moving off the leg and side passing and leg yields, is what we use today. For the deputies on this specialized unit, their day starts long before they climb on the backs of their trusty steeds. You know, we've got about three hours worth of work um, prior to actually hitting the street or leave, leaving the barn. When people are seeing our unit, we're probably the most photographed unit, most videoed unit that we have in the sheriff's office um, because we're so highly visible. So these guys have got to be parade ready all the time. So normally we'll come in, we'll feed, and as they're eating, we'll start getting our tack and things ready, get that high shined and polished and, and prepared. Then we'll wash the horses and when they're drying, we'll get ourselves ready, then we'll tack and then we'll usually get out on the street, trailer out to wherever we're going. Where would we expect to see you in Sarasota County? Basically, you're going to see us all over the place. You know, you, ne you never really know. Mostly we work most of the large events that are in the county. They have us there because um, we're really a very good physical presence. Um, we're very easy to see, and it's very easy for us to see what's going on and, and to be noticed. And so we're very easy, uh, easily summoned for help if uh, anybody needs us. And we do all kinds of different things. We'll do anything from neighborhoods, parks, beaches. While on patrol, the deputies work in pairs. And with these large horses, seeing them on the streets can be rather daunting. Well, you know, the biggest thing is we work in pairs. And the great thing about a horse is it's actually the least aggressive way to make arrests and to interact with the public because they are animal. Most people really like animals. But the other thing is because they are so big, all of our horses are 16 and a half, 17 hands, sometimes 18 hands. And because of that, they're very intimidating. And so that actually is what helps us, helps keep us safe because when you're looking at a 10 foot officer, uh, it can be intimidating. But again, that helps us and uh, get our job done. And these guys are a big part of that. The horses and their riders are continually trained on everything from basic riding techniques to how to handle situations like riots. They even have special gear for the horses to wear in more dangerous settings. You have told me that you do have some specialized equipment for Legacy, and this is one of the pieces that you have. What will this actually do for him? This will protect his eyes and protect the bridge of his nose in case of a, a riot situation. What does this help? This is um, considered a muck boot, or mac boot, excuse me. Um, what it has inside here is a steel plate. It will put them on their hooves. It will protect the bottom of their feet. If somebody was to throw nails out, et cetera, in a riot situation, we would put these on to keep their feet from injuring, being injured. Steel and metal aren't the only thing protecting these horses, though. But they are also protected by some laws, are they not? Yeah, they are protected by laws. You know, if anybody harasses, purposely harasses or strikes or something like that to a police horse, you know, it's a misdemeanor and if they injure him, it's a felony. Somebody to come up and try to harm him or punch him or even just kind of pat him, slap him on the back and things of that nature. So that, that is definitely not acceptable. That is not and, acceptable. And that could be a ticket, could it not? they would be arrested. <laughs> a trip well, to jail. Well, really? Yes. Oh my, with legacy leading all the way, right? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that they have on some level any idea of the importance that they serve with you? You know, I, I know that uh, horses are made to work. Uh, it, it's really a good, that's what they were designed for. And I, I think they enjoy their job. They like a lot of attention. When we're out, we get a lot of people that uh, come up to us, talk to us, pet the horses. I mean, that's what we're there for. Nobody goes out and pets a patrol car. And I've seen, uh, as they say, we see miracles every day where you, you know, somebody will come in barely able to walk, barely able to sit up straight, and often by the end of the session, they're able to have enough strength to hold him up. And you know that it's just so much goodness that goes into that. These horses have a special mission, and they take great pride in what they do. 
Well, the therapy can cover uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy. Hippotherapy is the therapeutic riding of horses coupled with the bodies, minds, and spirits of people with disabilities. Since a horse's movement closely resembles the normal gait of a human, it can be used to produce normalization of muscle tone, posture, balanced improvements, and increased strength. The movement of the horse, the three-dimensional movement of the horse, uh, simulates the movement of hips if somebody was able to walk. Uh, it builds core strength. It uh, helps with coordination. Uh, each therapist has a plan that they use for the therapy. Uh, our horses are chosen for that rider because of the way the horse moves. This is a prescribed medical treatment. Well, actually, uh, our riders come in because of a doctor's prescription. It's actually prescribed. This is a medical treatment, just like any type of physical therapy or speech therapy. And the selection of horses is extremely important. A lot of our horses are donated or they're purchased, and they go through a three to six month training an evaluation to see if they'll fit into this environment. It's a very different environment. Um, not every horse will, will be able to do it. Uh, their temperament is taken into consideration. Uh, their uh, size, we don't want them too tall because we have side walkers that have to reach up and hold their arm up there for half an hour. In Stride Therapy, located in Nokomis, currently has 18 horses and 10 therapy horses and welcomes riding participants between the ages of 18 months and 11 years of age. We watched these gentle creatures interact with their riders and were amazed at their understanding of what they needed to accomplish. We work with uh, children and adults with everything from uh, spina bifida, autism, cerebral palsy, multiple sclerosis, uh, traumatic brain injuries, uh, stroke victims, uh, a lot of both cognitive as well as physical disabilities. Gidget and her friends are full of compassion and love and have the will to make a difference in people's lives. So what more could you ask for? Still ahead on Animal Outtakes. And most people don't realize that they can actually swim. We'll take you along on this amazing experience. But first... They are like potato chips. You cannot stand to have just one. Meet the woman who's dedicated her life to her herd of miniature horses. Oh, goodness, that feels so good. Huh? That feels so good. For thousands of years, we've been human's best friend. You've been through a lot, and we've been right there with you. A dog is part of the family, a confidant, and a friend who always knows how to get into your heart. So what happens to our beloved companions when we can no longer care for them? This is why we've created Dante's Den, an innovative, state-of-the-art facility that will provide care for up to 100 dogs. Dante's Den is a community for joyful dogs. Millions of Americans face uncertainty when planning for the future of beloved pets who may well outlive them. Dante's Den is a charitable organization, so in whatever capacity you can, please lend your support so that we may continue this most wonderful work. Dante and I would like to thank you for watching and for also opening up your hearts to our wonderful community of joyful dogs. Learn about the many ways you could become involved by visiting dantesden.org. For me, it started with one hit of sardines. Oh, sardines. That's where I learned to bag. It was easy to score free fish. I mean, hey, with this dolphin smile, yeah, it's illegal, but hey, no one cares. I had a monkey on my back. Man, I was jonesing for people food, hanging out under boats, dodging props and hooks, and doing dangerous stuff, stuff that uh, I'm ashamed to admit. Look, I know that I can kick this if people would just stop feeding me. When you enter Fallen Pine Farms in Sarasota, Florida, it doesn't take long to realize 
you're somewhere special. Judy, this is the most magical place on earth. Why did you decide to do this? Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, we had quarter horses here and my husband saw an ad in the paper for three miniature horses. He thought that meant miniature quarter horses. So he called up on the telephone and bought them sight unseen. We take this eight horse trailer to go pick up three little tiny horses. Those people are still laughing at us to this day. Judy Middleton has created quite a home for these horses, all of which are miniatures, standing no more than 34 inches tall. That's less than three feet. Miniatures are like a big dog. They'll climb right in your lap. So, uh, And we like that. Yes! yes. <laughs> it has been more than 35 years since bringing those first miniature horses home. Get a lot of that And here. what is the upkeep for the miniature horse? Um, in today's society, Probably your cost is about $30 a month in hay. I, I don't have a lot of grass here, so I have to hay, and I have to, I, I don't have to, but I do feed them twice a day, a grain, a horse and pony, miniature horse and pony grain, and that's about $20 a bag, and you can feed them for about 40 days on a bag. That's less mm -hmm. than a dog. Yes, it is. <laughs> less than my big dogs. And what about the hooves? What do you need to do with that? You do need to have a farrier, which is a, 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 a person that trims, that gives a pedicure just to the horses. You need to have a farrier about once every six weeks to two months. There are more than 70 horses on Judy's 40-acre farm. While most belong to her, some belong to students who train the horses for competitions. Juliana, you're here with the 4-H. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose to do this? Well, I've had a love for horses and animals since I was little, and my dad just brought me out one day, and I met the horses, and I loved them. When you go to the shows, what paces do you put Razzie through? Well, there's different classes that we put the horses in, and there's showmanship, halter, obstacle, and driving. Um, and he probably does the best at showmanship, and it's more like, it's a, all about how you present your horse, how you look, how your horse behaves, how he respects you, and he's really good in that class. So he's a devil. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Both Juliana and Ella are out today taking their horses over jumps and through obstacle courses, training for their next competition. Now, I saw you doing something very interesting over here with a, an umbrella. Can you tell us about it? Well, that's where you um, come over to this mailbox and you set your horse up. And you um, try to wave the umbrella around the horse so that um, at shows it can be very distracting and exciting for a horse. And so sometimes they like to rear and s start to kick. And so that's why the umbrella comes in handy, to try to calm them down. Judy actually helped jumpstart the showing of miniature horses, organizing the first show in the state for these pint-sized ponies. I like to show the animals off and show what the horses can do. I started the first miniature horse show in the state of Florida in 1981 at the Sarasota County Fair. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> that ended up being the first miniature horse show in the southeastern United States. How many winners do you have? We have 94 national champions here. We hold 94 titles, uh-huh. How has Rozzy changed your life? He's made me more understanding and patient because when we're training them, you can't just say like, hey, don't do that because they don't understand you. You have to like understand and figure out a way to communicate with them. What is the special characteristic that you attach to, the bond that you attach well, to? Well, you these? bond quickly to these. They are easy to pet and love, and they love petting and loving. They love scratching like most any horse does. They're just like a big dog, actually. Love just scratching and loving um, are, are just really something they just thrive on. I just love spending time with him because he's my favorite horse. And now that I own him, um, it just makes it very nice to come out here and see him all the time. Would you call him your best friend? Probably. Next on Animal Outtakes, have you ever seen a horse swimming at the beach? We take you on the amazing excursion. Plus, how riding horses is helping cancer patients recover. For thousands of years, we've been humans' best friend. 
You've been through a lot, and we've been right there with you. A dog is part of the family, a confidant, and a friend who always knows how to get into your heart. So what happens to our beloved companions when we can no longer care for them? This is why we've created Dante's Den, an innovative, state-of-the-art facility that will provide care for up to 100 dogs. Dante's Den is a community for joyful dogs. Millions of Americans face uncertainty when planning for the future of beloved pets who may well outlive them. Dante's Den is a charitable organization, so in whatever capacity you can, please lend your support so that we may continue this most wonderful work. Dante and I would like to thank you for watching and for also opening up your hearts to our wonderful community of joyful dogs. Learn about the many ways you can become involved by visiting Dante'sDen.org. For me, it started with one hit of sardines. Oh, sardines. That's where I learned to bag. It was easy to score free fish. I mean, hey, with this dolphin smile, yeah, it's illegal, but I, no one cares. I had a monkey on my back, but I was Jones for people food. Hanging out under boats, dodging props and hooks, and doing dangerous stuff, stuff that, uh, I'm ashamed to admit. Look, I know that I can kick this if people would just stop feeding me. Monday at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. Hello, I'm Don Brennan. We all know exercise helps build your muscles, but new research showing it also helps build something else as well, brain power. Monday on Good Morning Sun Coast will show you how working out can help improve your memory as well. John? The front has sunk south. What happens next? We'll take a look at the week's forecast bright and early. Monday at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. On your TV. On your computer. On your camera. On your smartphone. On your Apple Watch. And now you can get ABC 7, your Suncoast News on Roku. Just go to mysuncoast.com and click on the mobile tab for a list of fast and free downloads that deliver ABC 7, your Suncoast News on the go. Monday on ABC 7 News at 7. Every school year, 21,000 plus children are receiving the free and reduced meals through the school programs. When summer comes, those meals end and hunger begins. Keeping Suncoast kids fed in the summer, what local groups are doing to combat hunger. I'm Haley Wilgus. That story plus our roundtable discussion. Monday on ABC 7 News at 7. Your Suncoast News. We are here for you. At ABC 7, our entire weathercast is dedicated to the Suncoast. And now we bring it to you like never before with the all-new official Suncoast forecast. Beach and boating forecast. The winds will be out of the northwest at 10 knots. Now with the most advanced graphics and technology, we bring you weather where you live, pinpointing right down to your neighborhood. Zooming into the Sarasota Bayfront. The all-new official Suncoast forecast only on ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. temper is a virus that can be actually very destructive and this virus is usually affecting animals that are non-vaccinated or non-immune to it so they're usually young animals that haven't had a chance to build an immune system and we can go ahead and take her in the OR super and what uh, happens with these dogs is the virus will go ahead and hit the immune system and it will go ahead and climb into their brain. So it starts usually respiratory with a cough, sneezes, eye discharge, and eventually it'll go all the way into their brain and can cause seizures. And by that time, it can actually pretty much kill the dog. So it's a very devastating virus. Once it reaches nervous system, it's irreversible. It's not like rabies where it's going to be killing you every time, but you can be left with a lot of damage and these dogs can suffer for a long time. So distemper is something we want to avoid because it's also at the time that it is respiratory, it's extremely contagious. If it goes to the brain at that point in time, it's no longer contagious, but in the respiratory form, it can pass it on to anybody within the environment of a breathing. When you think of the beach, sand, surf, and sun come to mind. But for some brave riders on this cold overcast morning, they added horses to that vision. 
It was unreal. I've never done anything like that. Laura, who's visiting Florida from New York, has a lot of experience with horses. So I've been working with horses my whole life, and I've never done a thing like that. It's just, it's unreal. The adrenaline rush is crazy. <laughs> she just finished riding a horse in the water. Sounds strange, but it's part of this one-of-a-kind excursion. What we do, we have people from out of town and are people just that like horses. They either come out to the beach or they do our trail rides. We took the horses out, we rode them up and down the beach, got to canter them a little bit, and then we took them out into the water and had them run. Who knew horses could swim? Most people don't realize that they can actually swim. When they are swimming, they have to. Ex uh, they make really loud noises to expand their lungs so they can float because they're actually too heavy to float. But do the horses even like it? They love it. The salt water is really good for their coat, and it gives them great exercise and gives them a purpose. A horse likes a job. I think they absolutely love it. You can tell their ears are pricked forward, they're <laughs> snorting, they're having a great time. They really seem to enjoy it. I think horses do like swimming for the most part. <laughs> The really unique thing is most places that take you out on trail rides, you get to walk up and down a trail, maybe see the woods a little bit. Here you actually get to go out into the water. You get to feel how hard the horse is working. It's, it's really an un incredible experience. For the volunteers at the Sarasota Manatee Association for Riding Therapy, being around horses is a way of life. Established in 1987, the all-volunteer team helps people with disabilities of all ages, from young to young at heart. But on this morning, a special group of riders is saddling up. They're part of a program called Hope Reigns. Executive Director Gail Clifton explains how the idea came to be. Uh, one of our longtime volunteers, um, whose name was Sherry Elliott, and she was battling stage four breast cancer. And she came to me one day and said, have you ever thought about having a program for women who are going through breast cancer treatments? And I said, no, but I think it's a great idea. Why don't we put a, to get a program together? She established the program for us and got our first four participants in the program. After grooming their horses, the ladies walk to the mounting block and climb on for an hour of stretches and horsemanship skills. But participants like Teresa Gregory say, they get so much more out of it than that. It's just uh, the, the release of energy that you can um, you get a chance to be yourself. You don't have to worry about what has happened. It's behind you and uh, you're able to move forward and um, you don't have to think about it, but you get to think about more wonderful things that are much more pleasant. You know, they're able to be with this animal and groom them and connect with them and, and just give some unconditional love, which, which they receive back. Today, the small group is working out in the arena. But that's not always the case. The first thing we do is we start off with uh, a big hug. <laughs> and then we, um, we're in the grooming our horses and uh, whatever's on the agenda. Sometimes it's going to be, uh, we'll be riding. Sometimes we'll be taking the cart out. Sometimes they give horses baths. It really kind of depends, you know, what they feel like doing that day. Gail says she and other instructors have seen how Hope Reigns has made a difference in these riders' lives. We see um, women that come out who are, are really struggling emotionally. And yet when they come out um, and they get to groom a horse, even if it's just grooming a horse for the day, they are able to kind of forget about a lot of the stuff that's going on in their lives. Well, horses have an instinct, animals have an instinct, and uh, they're, they're there to comfort and to you know, guide our paths, and uh, he does a great job of it. There's more animal outtakes after the break. On Animal Outtakes, every week, it's a new animal adventure. From meeting curious lemurs to feeding big cats and hosing down rhinos, there's never a dull moment. And sometimes these amazing animals chime in. Tune in to Animal Outtakes to find out what they have to say. Watch Animal Outtakes this weekend on ABC7. At SWC Properties, we pride ourselves in providing to you the very best in customer satisfaction and the secrets getting out. Maybe that's why so many people have chosen to list their homes with our friendly and qualified agents. After all, it only makes sense to list with a growing agency that markets in so many places. To list your home with SWC, give us a call at our Sarasota office. And don't forget to watch the House to Home Show every Saturday night here on ABC7. It's simple. 
We just market your home better. On the next Black Almanac. In keeping up with their reputation of class, culture, and dignity, the Sarasota County Branch and NAACP Youth Council will hold their 2016 Men of Valor Awards Breakfast at the Robert L. Taylor Complex on Saturday, June 25th at 8.30 a.m. This honor is given to men going above and beyond, contributing positive attributes to the African-American community. Sunday morning at 7.30 on ABC7. Have you ever wondered what it's like to save a life? Find out by donating platelets at Suncoast Blood Bank. I'm Haley Wilgus, ABC7. Platelets aid in the clotting process and are vital in the treatment of cancer and surgical patients, trauma victims, and critically ill newborns. It's tough to keep enough on the shelves because they only last five days. To donate, call this number or visit scbb.org and you can help save a life. ABC7 congratulates Suncoast Blood Bank on 65 years of serving our community. At ABC7, our entire weathercast is dedicated to the Sun Coast, and now we bring it to you like never before with the all-new official Sun Coast forecast. Beach and boating forecast.